general comments from me. <laughs> uh, I asked these guys about expectations, but uh, this, the slow starts uh, of the last couple seasons, I mean, what, you know, I know the players have been charged with um, fixing some of that on their own and what they do in the off season, but as far as you and your staff, what do you, what do you expect to do different maybe during this camp and maybe during the, uh, the early part of the season to, to prevent another slow start? Well, what, what we want is try to get up to game speed right away, and it starts in practice. Uh, how you practice, the intensity, physicality, those are all things. Uh, you know, as a coach, we try to, as coaches, we try to stress, uh, play it like games. Uh, you hear that a lot about, from coaches, and, and, and it is the truth. You know, as players, you want them to get better individually. And when somebody's going full speed and if you aren't ready to go, he'll knock you on your butt, but he's making himself better. But when you get those those guys that go that way, they make your whole team better. So from a standpoint, it starts in practice. Um, I think the one thing that'll make us faster and better this year too is, is the depth of this group. Uh, they, uh, and I'm talking Yarmo, JD and Billy alluded to the success up at Traverse City. I was there for two days. And what you're starting to see is is the benefit from from poor seasons uh, years, you know, three years ago, because these draft picks are starting to come through. And you saw a lot of talent up there. And, and to me, again, that's the story. Uh, you know, I was in the back listening, and I know I'm rambling a little bit here, but I was sitting in the back listening, and the, for the first 10 minutes of this, it was all about Ryan Johansson. That's not the story. That's a story. The story is this group and this organization, the talented players, the young players. It's what... Uh, the team accomplished last year. It's uh, the Brandon Dubinskys, the Jack Johnsons. James Wisniewski had a good offensive year for us. There's so many other stories, so many other things to be excited about. It's just a story. The story is is this team. Coach, uh, you, you sort of touched on it a little bit. And after the playoff series, the, the thing that you talked about the most was we have to be faster. Um, and since a lot of your roster is coming back the same as last year, how do you envision seeing your team play faster this year? I want to be more structured. Uh, I think organize better coming back into our own zone. Um, we'd like to get our, our defensemen uh, going back for pucks on breakouts so we can break out with three forwards. It's not going to happen every time. Um, but I think if we can have that mentality, that'll allow us to play faster. But we got to do things quicker with our legs and quicker with our minds. Um, I, I think players maturing, developing. You know, we were the youngest team in the league last year. And as those players mature, get older, they're going to get stronger. They're going to get faster. I think the we're starting to get, as I talked about, the benefits of draft picks starting to come through. When you have three first-round picks, those are going to be three good players. And a lot of times they're offensive, skilled players. And when you start adding those to the to the lineup, they're going to make you a faster team. And and you know they're quicker, skilled-wise. Um, quicker with their minds as far as in anticipation so you can play a faster game but from coaches it's you know it's uh, what we can control as far as us playing faster systematically there's not going to be a rat nothing radical change we still want to be the hard team that that uh, I, I think we established last year JD talked about it our identity and how we play we aren't going to change that we got those types of players that's what our personnel is but how can we get it into the offensive zone quicker how can we transition quicker how can we get out of our own zone quicker and we believe with more structure how good do you think this defense core can be when you have three stable veterans you know you can rely on and last spring murray and i think especially savard showed you that they can handle even more it, it, again it comes down to the depth uh, of the organization the young players starting to come through you know and timmy erickson had a great year down at springfield um you know he's a guy that uh, will get lots of time in camp um, but you're right. It is the it is the depth. You're seeing these young players. Dalton Prout, uh, the two years ago, came in and was tremendous for us. And David Savard stepped in last year and basically did the same thing that that Dalton did the year before. Um, and and it's it's I don't know if the expectations coming in as coaches sometimes you just don't know. But those were great stories for us. And the question this year is who's going to be that young guy? Who's going to be the two, three young guys that are going to step up and, and have great years for us?
Todd, you used the phrase don't know right there. How many of the don't knows this year are more positive, if you will, than your don't knows last year? I mean, last year you had some unknowns, obviously, that you may have lost sleep over. Are those good or bad don't knows this year? The, the more you spend with the team, and there wasn't a lot of uh, transition as far as personnel. Uh, you, know, you know, we're bringing in, you know, Scott Hartnell's coming in. We might have, you know, a couple more young guys that, that will fill some certain roles on our team at depth. Um, so as a coach going into the season, there's a lot that you do know. And I'm talking about just what players can and can't do. Now, you're asking for your young players to develop. And to me, that's part of the don't know. How far are they going to develop? How far is a guy like Matty Calvert, how far can he go? Cam Atkinson. And, and again, we can go right down the list with our forwards. We can go right down the list with our defensemen. But that's the exciting thing about being a, a, a young hockey team is there's, for me, there's lots of room for these guys to improve and get better. And when they're improving and getting better, getting faster and stronger, they're going to make your team better. Todd, have there been any conversations about a captain this offseason? There have been conversations. And, and those are the conversations you have with coaches and you have with the management and, and the organization. And there have been conversations with fans <laughs> o o over that. Because it seems like wherever I go, that is the, the one question I get. And I, I, you know, I got a call from uh, uh, Pierre, Pierre Lebrun the other day, and he's doing a story uh, uh, up in Montreal. And I think other organizations are looking at, at how we managed it here, and not necessarily that they're going to pattern their, themselves after us, but I think they're looking at our situation and, and seeing, if, is that a benefit? And I'm not saying that we're going to name a captain or we aren't going to name a captain. Again, it, it, it comes down to figuring out what's right for your team, what's right for your personnel, what's right for your organization. Because, again, it, you know, it becomes a face of the franchise. And I believe in the guys in the room. It doesn't mean by us name, not naming a captain, and we aren't saying oh, we don't have a leader or a good leader down there. There's lots of good leaders down there. But sometimes when you just do name the C, sometimes, sometimes it takes away from the other leaders. And again, it's just making the right decision at the right time uh, that's best for your organization. Uh, a year ago, we asked where the goals were going to come from. You set a franchise record for goals. I guess the question this year is where the goals come from if you subtract 33 from Johansson and 63 points? Other players. Simple as that. Um, it's The way I approach it is... It's just like during the season if somebody's injured. Uh, you take that guy out of the lineup, you put somebody in, and somebody's going to get some opportunities. Uh, you know, Joe was a, is a guy that, that plays a lot of the big minutes, plays a lot of the offensive minutes. And you take those minutes out, at least for, for him being there, somebody's going to get great opportunity. And what we need to do is, and I think what made us uh, uh, – dangerous and which ultimately led to our success was the depth of our team. We were able to play four lines. We were getting contributions from a lot of different guys. Um, you know, Brandon Dubinsky, I believe, had a career year for him last year. And, and again, which young guy or guys are going to step up and, you know, when they get that opportunity? Todd, Coach Larson joins your staff from Springfield this year. What is he bringing to your coaching team, and what do you see him bringing to the organization? What attracted me to Brad, number one, is I've, I've spent time with him, and you're able to sit down and have discussions. And this is when he was a head coach with the, with the Springfield team, even when he was an assistant down there. And uh, he's a very passionate guy, and he's a knowledgeable guy. What I liked about it is he knows our organization. He knows the players. Um, he knows how we want to play the game. There's also that, that relationship that I already have with them. I'm not trying to figure out somebody else. Uh, so there are a lot of important reasons uh, why to bring him in. He's got great relationships with our young players. A lot of these players played for him while, they were, while he was down in Springfield. Again, those relationships are really important. And, and when you're trying to uh, build off of last season, you, you, you want the transition. And I'm just talking going from last year to this year. You, you want to be as smooth as possible. And bringing in somebody that has some familiarity with the players, familiarity with the organization, the other coaches, the staff, just makes or leads to a smoother transition. 
As a coach of a team full of young players, guys you're trying to motivate to grow their game, is it a unique tool at all having an all-star game here in Columbus, a weekend that's almost built for kids as a motivating tool in the start of the season? Are you, are you talking young kids or our players, young kids? Probably in the back of their mind, they're, they're thinking about the all-star game. Uh, what's forefront right now is the opening day of training camp and getting through training camp. I know after probably the first three, four days, guys really wish camp was over with and they're looking forward to the first game. And, and then we'll go from there. I think as we get closer and closer, as the media starts to build up the game, the, the city starts to build up the game, the league starts to build up the game, I think there will become more of an excitement uh, for it. But I believe our guys are, are really channeled and focused to what we need to do as, as the Columbus Blue Jackets. The, the all-star game is, is secondary. Todd, this is kind of in the line of, of expectations and how they ratcheted up again. But do you, you know, when you look at, at your dressing room, do you see, um, do you see a possibility for, for, for this team to play a game this season where they're, quote, in over their heads? I mean, is that something that's, that's gone considering the success you guys have had? In over our heads, meaning we're, we're what, outplayed, outclassed? Yeah, I, I, I don't feel that way. I, I don't think I've ever really felt that way. Maybe it's just the pride that, that I have and maybe the confidence that I have uh, going in. I, I, I do believe that sometimes there, there are times as a, as a team, and I think players and coaches sometimes walk into arenas, walk into buildings, and um, I, I heard John use the word hope, and I, I think there are times where we walked into buildings, players or teams walked into buildings, and you're hoping to win. And uh, it might have been like that in the past here, but I, I can tell you this, that our players, our organization, our coaches, we get off the bus and we walk into buildings, we're expecting to win. And uh, I, I think that's an attitude, that's a mentality, and it's not a, a, a overconfidence, uh, cocky. It's not that. It's just believing in, in, in what you have and what you do. And there's going to be games this year where I'm going to probably hear some boos, and that's what happens over an 82-game season. You, you aren't going to play every game perfect. You aren't going to play every game great. And I go back to our first Ranger game that we played here last year. Man, that, that was a tough game. That was a tough game. And you think about that game and, and when you played the Rangers, the last game here, what a difference it was. And just and I'm more talking about how we played the game. And so you're going to have that. But I believe that, and, and Yarmo uh, alluded to it, and I agree 100%, that expectations are higher. And it comes from everywhere. Uh, it comes from within, coaches, players. We're expecting a lot more. It comes from the media, the fans, the league, uh, those expectations. And, and to me, that, that, that's a great uh, compliment. Basically, they're saying that they're, they're starting to respect what you're doing.